In this video we're going to be discussing the main screen of the Mach 3 control system. This is just going to be an overview. We're going to go into more detail on a lot of these features in later videos. <clears throat> first you want to, we'll start up here at the first, uh, the left hand corner. These are your digital readouts or DROs. These indicate your position of your Z axis, Y axis and X axis on the machine. Um, this fourth axis is not used in, with the CNC plasma, so you never have to worry about this. Basically, there's um, your readout, you have two buttons, a zero button and a reference button. If I hit, say, I can enter in uh, coordinates if I want. Say I want to set that as being in the 25 inch positive position. Um, anytime you enter generally anything in the mock, if you enter it in, you always need to uh, hit the enter button in order to make it stick. Because if I don't hit the enter button, it reverts back to the old setting. So you always have to remember that if you, uh, if you want a setting to stick, you have to hit the enter button. So the zero button basically also simply does exactly what it says, it zeroes out your axis. Um, we'll discuss why and when you want to do this um, in later videos. Um, now your reference button, this is going to be, these are, the reference Y and reference X are important to you. Don't really want to worry about the reference Z because you're not going to be using that. Now, the reference Y will essentially drive your Z-axis slowly towards the left-hand side of the machine until it hits the home switch. Then it will move off the home switch a short distance and stop. And that's going to be reference, the X-axis would be reference considered zero point, or I would call machine zero. Now, if you do the same thing with the Y-axis, it's going to drive your gantry towards you Basically, if you're standing in front of the machine, it's going to move the gantry in the negative direction because positive is away from you, negative is towards you. Um, it's going to drive the gantry, both sides of the gantry, towards the negative side of the y-axis and it will bring it up against the home switches and, and um, stop the axis. Now, wh what happens when, that, when it does that is it drives each side of the axis independently and so therefore it will automatically square up your gantry if your gantry is out of alignment and by adjusting your limit switches that's how it's also how you adjust your gantry for squareness we'll discuss that later moving down um, basically this is your g-code window this is the window that's going to show you g-code that you're cutting at the moment right now I have this Arc Pro 6000 tag loaded up and um, if I scroll down through it you can watch the little white lines that's indicating what is being cut on what line so um, we're gonna go into more detail on this later but just just get to know that this is your G code and it's handy to kinda move through it and watch what's happening over here and look at your different codes and you can kind of get an idea of what it's doing and what the uh, the G codes telling mock to do um, up here this indicates which line you're on um, and this shows which G code is loaded up so down here you have your load G code your close G code um, your rewind button um, if I hit this it's going to bring it back up to the top Rewind the G-code all the way. Um, you have edit code G-code button. I can hit this and it will pull up the G-code in Notepad and I can make changes to the G-code. It's definitely a more advanced um, process, but uh, definitely the more you get into this, um, it's something you're going to want to be able to do. Um, so I close it out. It's going to regenerate the G-code. The run from here button will basically pick a line and let me run the G-code from that position. We'll go into that much more detailed 
um, later on and this also lets me set which line will run next looking down here you have this jog button generally you always want to keep this on this is going to allow you to jog or not um, I never turn this off if this happens to get turned off by accident it can be very confusing for people because all of a sudden your jog buttons don't work now jogging on your machine is controlled by your right left up down arrows and your z-axis is controlled by your page up page down buttons um, so you always want to leave that on now your load material button um, this is simply a feature that if you hit this it will go to a it will take your gantry and move to a predetermined location um, we'll talk about that later um, usually I just jog where I need to go um, I don't generally load, use the load material button too often look down here this is your feed rate override um, settings um, right now if I were to run this um, while the machine is running I can increase the feed rate 10 percent at a time and this is indicating I'm at 140 percent of whatever this program this is programmed to run at where I can also decrease it 10 percent at a time so one important thing to remember with this setting is that once you override it and that button is flashing it will stay overwritten even if I load up a new set of G code if I don't hit the reset button I will run this G the new G code at either 80 percent or whatever percent increase or decrease in feed rate that I have set that I ran the last program as so you always want to not have that going or unless you want it on basically to get rid of it just hit reset brings it back to 100 um, percent these are your output controls located on the bottom of the um, in inside your control cabinet on the bottom of the CNC uh, plasma control box there are two outlets um, there's outlet and one is a 15 amp outlet and one is a 10 amp outlet and they're both controlled by these buttons basically so you can set this up however you want whether it be to control fan lights um, any a number of different things um, you can plug into those outlets on the bottom and you'll be able to control it with the computer um, this here is your torch height control interface this is where you're going to be doing most of your work in mock while the machine's cutting we're going to go over this in much more detail in later videos but this is just briefly giving you the overview the torch volts this is going to indicate the actual voltage at the cut while the machine is cutting your preset volts this is going to be your um, whatever cuts uh, your your ideal cut voltage and by setting this you're going to look at to set this you're going to be looking at the manual that came with your plasma cutter generally what they're they're going to come with is um, recommended voltages for particular types of materials so if I were say cutting 14 gauge I would know I would be at 115 so if I type in one thing a side note if I type in a number just like I did in order to get the torch height control to recognize it I have to hit send to digital torch height control okay so generally what I'll do is use these up and down arrows and by doing this I don't have to hit this button it automatically updates to the torch height control the correct voltage so you can update and modify your voltage while the machine is running on the fly in order to raise and lower your torch torch amps you're not going to be using this this requires a separate um, digital amp meter um, current probe generally we um, generally don't don't need it this is going to show whether your torch height control is on or off so that's on and this is off um, here are your cut profile settings we'll go over this in more detail but this is generally a little library of settings where you can set different settings for different types of material and then say I'm cutting uh, 14 gauge steel I pull up my uh, cut profile I click 14 gauge steel 
click OK. And it's going to load up my correct values here. And it sets everything sets up for me. So I don't have to remember the cut settings for each type of material. I don't have to write them down in a book. This really simplifies things for you and your employees. This is going to manually fire the torch to this button here. Um, that's torch on, torch off. Um, and we'll talk about where and when you'd want to use that later. The smart cut, I don't recommend you use the smart cut at this point in time. Um, it has a few bugs that haven't been worked out. The idea of the smart cut is that it will automatically set your voltage for you. Um, generally, I would avoid it at this time um, and work on setting your voltage manually. This is your tip saver. This is basically a percentage window of this voltage that will essentially it prevents the torch from diving. Generally at the end of uh, cutting holes or the end of say you're cutting across a kerf or an already cut spot the um, voltage will increase, jump up and generally your torch your torch height controls want to, want to dive the torch down to compensate for that um, this is one of the few the really good features of this control software that allows you to prevent that torch from diving into the material so and you can click it on and off by clicking on and off that um, these ind arrows indicate these LEDs will indicate whether or not your torch is moving up and down they're generally just for reference letting you know that essentially the torch height control is active your arc OK light this is going to be a signal that's going to come from your plasma cutter and it's going to tell the mock control software that yes the arc has been thrown and to start moving um, anytime the arc were to go out say for say you moved off the material um, or your consumables just kind of got worn down to where they don't throw the arc this signal will go off and mock will freeze and stop uh, and we'll talk about what happens when you do that in later videos um, and this is going to tell you whether your digital torch height control is online um, generally anytime you turn on your machine and have your control your powered up this light is going to be green okay this is your G code window or your your tool to uh, um, tool path display and basically this is going to show you the path the cutter is going to take um, so as far as just moving around this window if I um, click on this window and then right click and hold down I can drag around the um, the cut I can also scroll in with my scroll button to zoom in on the cut um, and this is gonna generally you don't don't want to mess around with this window while the machine's cutting um, it's kind of an inefficient video display and it takes up a lot of processing power so generally while the machine is moving uh, or cutting apart don't be zooming around you're kinda asking for problems Every now and then, Mach will throw in a hiccup if you're uh, messing with this. Um, so basically, what you're looking at here, this little uh, crosshair indicates the position of our um, your torch currently. Um, these blue lines indicate cuts. The dotted red lines indicate um, uh, rapids or uh, transit movements. As you can see, looking at this G-code, um, if I scroll up to the beginning, I can kind of work my way down through here, and I can see that, yes, in fact, I'm starting right there, and then it's gonna, I'm going to move over to here and cut that hole, and if I move down further, I'm going to wrap it over to here and then then I enter into the cut right there and it's going to start cutting the perimeter of the A 
or the interior of the egg. And as I scroll down, you can see on the left hand side the different lines of G-code and what they're telling the machine to do. Um, so uh, it's handy to be able to walk through this and um, you can kind of get an idea of like this indicates a straight line move. Um, I can tell. And then if I go up to here, this is indicating this is a small little arc move. I can tell by that J move right there. Um, so uh, now one thing to notice if you were to left click and drag you do this kind of 3D action. Um, generally it can be confusing. It's not very useful when you're plasma cutting. So um, now this is showing you your rapid heights. It's showing me I'm going over here Wrapping two inches down, cutting, wrapping up two inches, moving over, down two inches, cutting, and so forth. But if I ever get stuck in this position and I want to fix it, you can just double click and it's going to pull you back to this window. Um, so I'm going to zoom in here. Now, if I jog my axes, you're going to see this axis move okay and it's gonna show where the z-axis currently is I'm, I'm kinda jogging pretty slow at the moment but uh, basically you get the idea so that's the tool display window um, or uh, tool path display window uh, down here, this is your run button. This is also called your cycle start button sometimes. You'll see that. Um, this is what you're going to do to run the G code. If I rewind this, I can hit run and it's going to start moving the Z axis. Moves over here, cuts, and so forth. You're going to start to see it move uh, as it runs through the Z axis. As, as I said, I'm jogging kind of slow right now. Um, and part of the deal is that you can't do a dry run because it's it's searching for the plate right now and I, I don't have this hooked up to the machine this computer so it's never going to find the plate so basically I can just stop it um, your feed hold button is going to feed hold the um, uh, the G code while it's in motion this is essentially a pause button. Um, if you ever have to pause the G-code while you're cutting, this is the button you're going to want to use. And you don't want to pause the G-code in the middle of it cutting, if you, unless you absolutely have to. Because when you hit the pause button, it will feed hold, um, but the one thing it won't do, it will, it will basically what it, the feed hold does is it allows mock to finish the last few lines of G code that it already buffered and so it maintains its position correctly so it still knows where it is so you have the ability to restart the program from right where you left off so if I hit feed hold and then hit run I will just keep basically I'm pausing the program and keep on going it's very handy if you have say tip ups or anything else you need to take care of and you don't want to do it obviously while the machine's running. Um, however, you always want to ideally feed hold on the rapid moves. Don't feed hold while the torch is actually on because you will end up with a divot where the hat, where your torch stops because the torch won't turn off. And so you're going to have to feed hold, turn off your torch, and then when you go to run again, you're gonna have you're gonna have the problem of rewinding. You're gonna have to rewind, so make sure that you can run and then turn on the torch, in order to um, make sure you cut the entire area. Um, so generally, always only feed hold on the rapid moves, either on the when the torch is being raised up, or lowered down, or wrapping between cuts. Stop button is exactly what it is. It's an e-stop button. It immediately stops the G-code in position, 
and therefore these does not allow Jamak to finish the lines that it's buffered and so it loses position every time. So we'll talk about if you have to e-stop how do you recover from your program in later videos. This is also a e-stop button and this is going to be your reset button. Um, so if I hit stop this reset button will start if I was hooked up to the machine would start flashing and then in order to get control of the machine again I would need to reset this. Okay. This regenerates the toolpath, basically reloads the G-code, the, the and um, it's another way if you get all messed up and where you are in position, um, so finding the G-code. Now, um, down here, this is um, your power supply readouts. This is going to tell you your case temperature. It's going to tell you your voltage that you're running at and the amps you're running at and this is your load meter. Um, generally for information purposes only, um, really the only one I pay attention to is the case temp. You know, if you have a really hot shop, uh, you could run into problems running on a really hot day. Um, you know, but uh, with the, um, the built-in filter fan on the control system, you shouldn't have any problems, generally. This is also where you're going to see your fault messages down here. Um, any faults that come from your uh, CNC plasma control will be displayed here. So if it ever does anything that you're unsure of, generally say it stops for some reason, you're not sure why, this is always a good place to look first to uh, see if this is giving you any fault messages. So, but that's the brief overview of the main window in mock um, and we'll be going over some of these features more in depth, but uh, that's it, and um, thanks for watching.